This is a second in a series of videos looking at um, interest problems, simple interest, periodic compound interest, and continuous compound pound interest. In each of these problems, we'll need to identify what type of interest the account is bearing so that we'll know which one of the three formulas to use. Then we'll identify the missing variable. And we'll then we'll identify the value of each of the given variables, plug those values into the formula, and then solve algebraically for the missing variable. We've noted that there's 12 different problems that we need to examine. This is the fourth problem in our list. How many years will it take $200 to become $275 at 5% simple annual interest. We're going to use the simple interest formula. So the first thing we noted in reading the problem was that it was a simple interest problem, so we use the simple interest formula. As we reread the problem, we notice that we know the present value is 200. How long will it take 200 to become 275 at 5%? So P is 200, A is 275, and the rate is 0 0.05 as a decimal. We want to find T. Substituting in the values, that means that we need to solve this equation for T. 5% of 200 is 10, so the equation becomes 275 is equal to 200 plus 10T. So the algebra tells us we need to subtract 200 from both sides and divide both sides by 10, so T is going to be this amount that our calculator can get for us. So we discovered it will, it will take seven and a half years for the $200 to become $275 at 5% simple interest. Here's our next problem. In each of these problems, we first identify what kind of interest is involved. That tells us the formula to use. We identify what it is that we need to find, which one of the four variables. We identify the value of the other variables, plug them into the equation, and solve algebraically. A quick reading of this problem, we discover that it's annual interest, but it's compounded quarterly. Compounded quarterly. So our appropriate formula is the compound interest formula, where n is equal to 4 because we're compounding quarterly. The known information is n is equal to 4 because we're compounding quarterly. The present value is $600. That's how much we're going to deposit. We're earning 2% um, compounded quarterly. So the, the r is 0 0.02 is the decimal, and the time is 5 years. We're looking to find the a value, the future value. Substituting the known information into the formula, we find that we just have a calculator problem here to solve. Hang on, this is supposed to be an n down here, which is 4, and the t is 5 years. Okay, that's what things look like when we plug the known variables into this uh, formula, and now it's just an algebra issue to, I mean a calculator issue to do this calculation. The reality is that the, lang that the bank won't pay us this part of a penny, almost three quarters of a penny left over. So the final amount should be $662.93. Even though this would round to 94 cents, the bank usually doesn't do that. Here's our next problem. Some money is going to deposit some money is going to be deposited in an account paying interest compounded semi-annually. Okay, that tells me what kind of formula to use. And after five years, the account will have $800. What's the interest rate? So the thing we'll be looking for is the interest rate, and we should be able to find the other variables. The other variables need to be defined in the problem so that we can solve. The known information is that n is equal to 2 because we're compounding semi-annually. We also know that the present value or principal is 700 and that the time is going to be 5 years and we're looking to find r. Back up just a little bit. We know that n is equal to 2 because we're compounding semi-annually. We know that the uh, 
present value is going to be 700. That's how much we're depositing. We know that after five years we have 800, so the final amount, the future value is 800, and uh, the time is five years. Okay, let's put that information into the formula. So let's look at this equation and think how we're going to solve it. The last thing that's being done on the right hand side is multiplying by 700. So we'll first divide by 700. Then we've got something raised to a power and we can undo that by rooting. It'll have to be a tenth root in that particular case. So here we have divided both sides by 700 and of course this 2 times 5 is 10. We'll now need to undo this raising something to the tenth power. So to undo that raising to the tenth power, we could tenth root both sides of the equation. Now our, the problem is your calculator might not have a tenth root on it, but it does have an exponentiation thing. So we'll change this to 800 over 700 raised to the one tenth power. Now we'll just to subtract a 1 from both sides of the equation and then multiply both sides of the equation by 2. A little tricky is a calculator problem, but that's all that we need to do. I'm going to write down what I would write as a calculator uh, calculation here. I'm assuming that your calculator will allow you to do some backspacing. So here's the idea. I'd be typing into my calculator two times something in parentheses. I, when, when I'm doing this, notice there's a number of parentheses and I've got to keep track of all of that stuff. So anytime I put a left parentheses, I also put a right parentheses and then back into the parentheses and fill in what's there. Now inside of that parentheses, I've got something raised to a power. Now the power I'm going to raise it to is a one-tenth. And then I'm going to minus a one from that. Now let's come back here and remember what needs to be put in this parentheses. It's 800 divided by 700. By using this kind of a strategy, backing up into things to, to uh, 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 putting both sides of the parentheses in and then backing into the parentheses to fill it in, then you avoid the problem of, for, of matching parentheses as you go along. Okay, let's do that calculation. So there's how the calculator entry would go and it calculates R to be this amount. So the interest rate is 2.69%.